Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 where today we're going to be taking a look at a new performance calculator for the A320 that has been made available and this is to replace the WAPRO website which many of us have used in the past and sadly is no longer available. If you've been watching some of my older videos and tutorials and even the live streams where we use use the WAPRO website to get our flex temp takeoff data then uh, you may have tried to access it and sadly found it is no longer there. No idea why uh, the domain, uh, domain has uh, simply expired and looks like it hasn't been replaced. So we've been using just TOGA uh, takeoffs for all, of, uh, for all of our flights as we had no way of calculating the, uh, the flex temp. Thanks to this new free program and download however that could all be about to change. So so it is essentially an Excel spreadsheet which has all the uh, mathematical coding in the background done so we can enter the values and get a nice flex temp calculation as we used to uh, using the WebPro website. So a quick introduction to this, as you can see it looks like a fantastic nice and neat interface, as I say it's just an Excel spreadsheet, but all of the figures that are in blue are the ones that we as the pilots need to populate. The figures in green will change depending on the values that we uh, that we set. Now, one of the things that the WebPro website was really good for is that it had a database built into it. So as soon as you put a uh, an airport in, you could automatically download the meta there in the web browser. Once you put a runway in, it would pull in the distance of the runway uh, available for the takeoff run, and uh, you could change which intersection as well. And all of that was already done automatically for you. Sadly, that is not the case here. It's a simple Excel spreadsheet, so we need to uh, do a little bit of manual work in order to get the information required. And I want to show you how uh, how we do that as we prepare for a departure here at Manchester on runway two three right. So. Let's bring up the charts. I'm using Navigraph inbuilt today, and this is where we're going to get all our information from. So we're going to depart runway 23 right, and we're going to be depart departing via the mic intersection just here. So using the information we can see, we're going to put in the runway uh, direction, which is a runway heading, is 23 two so let's go ahead and pop that in two three two the runway elevation is two four nine there we go the runway length in meters very important that we flag that up in meters so the runway length in meters you may think is 3048 that would not be so however what we want to do is go and check the airport information tab if you use Navigraph and we'll see if we're departing on runway 23 right and I said we're going to leave from uh, taxiway Mike intersection the actual value that we want is 2567 meters so let's go ahead and pop that in 2567 now the runway slope I don't think this was uh, I'm not sure if this was taken into account in Wap Pro. I uh, can't remember now for most of the uh, most of the runways and certainly for flight simulation purposes we could just leave this set at zero however if you did want to work out the percentage of the uh, runway slope as it is a field there that we could do there's a little formula that we uh, that we need to uh, to do and check out for that so basically to get the runway slope slope you need to find the difference in the runway's elevation from one side to the other now it's actually quite easy just here so it's 249 there and 200 there so there's a difference of 49 feet what we want to do then is divide that figure 49 by the runway length. Now this is where it gets a little bit complicated because the runway length we always talk about meters don't we for stopping distances etc but when we're doing the runway slope calculation we want to divide the uh, difference in the elevations from one side to the other so in this case 49 by the runway length in feet which is 10,000 so 49 divided by 10,000 we then want to multiply that answer by 100 so runway difference divided by runway length in feet 
and then divide that answer uh, sorry then multiply that answer by 100 and the answer for this is 0 0.49 now as we're taking off from the higher end and going to the lower end it's going to be minus 0 0.49 where we're taking off in the other direction it would be plus 0 0.49 so we're going to pop that uh, pop that in minus 0.49 there we go Okay, and for a clear way, we can select no. A clear way is just an area at the end of the runway that uh, can be used for the aircraft to come to a stop if required. But to be conservative, we'll always leave that set at no. Okay, we then need to get the meta. Now, if you're using the fly pad in the fly bar wire, we've got the meta just here. So we need to go ahead and pop that in. So as we can see, the wind is showing 310 at eight knots let's go and pop that there the outside air temperature is 19 degrees the q and h is 1023 just go ahead and change that and the runway condition is dry and you've got a little drop down menu there where you can obviously select the uh, different runway conditions so we'll leave that to dry now then we need to add a few more details so our takeoff weight again we can get that from our operational flight plan uh, oops wrong button let's uh, try that operational flight plan let's just zoom in so our estimated takeoff weight obviously you would check this this is the OFP so if you decide you're lo loading extra fuel you'll need to check that on uh, on the aircraft's uh, lower ECAM it'll tell you the current weight so the takeoff weight is 63111 let's pop that in now this is in tons of course so we're going to be conservative we wouldn't round that down to 63 always round up so we're uh, looking at the higher side so we're going to uh, go with 64 tons and then thrust you can select toga if you wish but obviously we're uh, trying to get a flex temp for this we're going to do config one air conditioning will be off so that's the uh, that's the packs anti-ice no need for that today so that's okay and then you would also want the uh, takeoff center of gravity which you would get from the just move that out of the way you'd get that from here so the center of gravity as it would be this aircraft as I'm doing this is actually not loaded at the moment so it is this figure we would put in uh, put in here and nine times out of ten is going to be somewhere around about the uh, 30 mark so I'm just going to pop 30 in uh, in there as I've been doing that you may have seen some of these figures change and that is now everything that we need it's already calculated for you so there we have the config, the thrust, and the uh, and the relevant V speeds. One of the other things we can do as well is you can select all reverses operative or all reverses inoperative. Inoperative again is just a little bit more uh, more conservative. So just having a look at this, the uh, trimmable horizontal stabilizer position for 30% is uh, is uh, suggesting non applicable. Now I'm not sure if we need to put 30.0 in there to make that work. Uh, no, let's just try a different value see if that uh, oh there we go um, well it's uh, it's updated it but uh, it's not giving us a uh, it's not giving us a, a trim up or down but that doesn't matter because we just use the values on the trim wheel so let's now just hop inside the uh, aircraft and we can uh, obviously use that and pop those uh, pop those details in so let me just slide this over here so we can see so you'd put in your transition altitude, you put in your thrust reduction again, that is explained in uh, in a different tutorial video. But the flaps were set for config one. Pop that in just there. We can then either use the V speeds given to us here, or we can use the V speeds as calculated by the simulator. So uh, we've got 144, 143, 142. That's nice and easy to remember. It would be interesting, of course, to see what was uh, given to us just here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in the flex that it's given us, which is 66. And we should then recalculate these V speeds, but I don't think they're going to change here in the simulator. So you can use these if you wish. As I say, it's 144, 14. Let me just pop that in. One, four, four, then one, four, three, and finally one, four, two. 
So this is a great little uh, replacement for getting the uh, flex if you want to do your flex calculations. It's not quite as straightforward as the WebPro site. It doesn't have, uh, as I say, the, the, the background database and uh, you can't just pull in the weather meta in automatically. You have to do that. Uh, you have to do that yourself, which, of course, is a bit of a shame, but it is a nice alternative and of course it is free as well so I'll pop the link to this on the video description but it is available as a download from flightsim.to and uh, yeah that's about it so thanks very much for watching guys if you do have any questions then please do leave a comment down below in uh, in the comment section and I'll get back to you on that please hit the subscribe button and uh, turn on the notifications bell for uh, information about more live streams and of course be to be notified when new videos are around thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you all again very soon bye bye